So I'm here at where my mom works. Remember the place where I made my 8,000 subscriber sign? My arcade machine over there and the embroidery machine. Well, I went to the dentist today because I thought I needed a filling and turns out I didn't have a cavity. So <laughs> that works out pretty nice. Well, anyway, since I didn't really have to have anything done, I had a little bit extra time on my appointment. So I had my dentist take an x-ray of my new camera. So this is how we had the sensor. You see, what I did was I just, I took the little LC, uh, the little x-ray chip thing, because it, it's a little USB connected up little sensor that is, it's not film anymore. They have the big x-ray machine from the 70s. It's like on an arm, much, much like a, a drawing lamp. And they move it over. And I just held the camera with the little sensor behind it. And I had the assistant take the x-ray. I had to turn up this, the uh, exposure quite a bit to get through the the metal and stuff inside the camera but yeah it's pretty awesome now I just I wish I would have done something though I wish I would have filmed it because I have a theory that if I would have filmed it you would have seen little speckles in the video because well the the x-rays were passing right through the CCD chip and so like that or the 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 image chip and so that whenever each x-ray particle or, or gamma or whatever it's called goes through the image chip it should make a bright spot so you'd see a bunch of static on the screen for a, a couple of seconds but i didn't do that oh but then again as you can see here the x-rays didn't get through the metal glass and stuff like that so maybe there would have wouldn't have been any radiation getting through to the image chip anyway it's interesting now what's interesting also is and the front of this camera is a little ring that kind of rotates around. It has different functions, like in the menu you can you can set what it does, like it can change the white balance, it can change its zoom and stuff like that. It's really interesting that that's actually made of plastic and doesn't show up. Like right here you can see that ring going around. That's that th thin piece of plastic that's the outer rotating like dial around the lens. Now these things right here, I don't know what they are. They look to almost be like screws in, inside of there. Then of course in the back, looks like we have some chips or something. They kind of go up and down like that. You know what, I'm starting to think it was focused like this. Yeah, okay, so this is probably how it was. Not the other way, this is probably how the... Because I, I had the image sensor kind of diagonal so it could reach more of the outer edges. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I really can't wait to start making my own x-ray machine. I would love to take x-rays. I'd make sure I had plenty of shielding before I powered it up. But what I'd love to do is I would love to get stuff and make it to where it automatically pans around the object so it takes like a thousand images of, of the item rotating. And then I compile those into an animation and play it back and you can see the object rotating with x-rays. Okay guys, so right now we're going to my all-time favorite thrift store. It's the, I think, I believe it's called the Ute Lot, uh, the Youth, Youth Lot, sorry, Ute Lot Thrift Shop in Greenville. Yeah, let's avoid the traffic go down this road. But pretty much, it is the best thrift store I've ever found. It has great prices, reasonable prices too. No outlandish, like, $30 for a broken Game Boy. And I think the biggest thing is, though, it just has interesting stuff. Because Greenville, Illinois is, well, it's very famous for its, like, college or whatever. So there's a lot of rich people around here. And there's a college. So you regularly find old projectors and stuff from the college. Find a lot of films from the college. And, yeah. People around here are pretty rich, so they buy a lot of electronics, like old computers and stuff. And so you can find, like, Apple IIs and IBM PCs at the thrift store. So let's see what we find today. So there's the thrift store right there. It used to be right next to Dairy Queen. I kind of I kind of liked it more back there. But oh well. I found so many nice things from this place. I found a lot of NES games and Commodore 64 stuff.
fucking CompuTron. Weird. Only three dollars. I'll get that. System 370. Don't know who these are. Pose systems. Can get that too. Oh, look in the back there. Nintendo 64. I'm going to ask him for that. Okay, guys. So I. Went back there. I looked at the Nintendo 64. There are two Super Nintendos below it. And right next to it was a box of about 50 Atari 2600 video games. And some power adapters too. So, I, I wrote down my name and they're going to check the price. And if they put a price on it, they're going to sell it to me first. Although I wish I would have told them to go untested. Because sometimes if they, if they don't test like they work, they'll just throw them away. Which is a shame. Yeah, I found some good stuff. Here, I'll show you. Ooh. Oh, by the way, you might get a phone call tomorrow. From? The thrift shop. Um, they had a uh, Nintendo 64, two Super Nintendos, and a bunch of Atari games. And if they call you, I'd like you to pick them up. Sure. I got that. Oh, nice. It's, I, I don't know what PO Systems is. PQ, looks like. Oh, P, okay, yeah, PQ Systems. I'll Google that for sure. check that out, yeah. Yeah, it looks PQ very systems. System. Yeah. But my, judging by this folder, you can take that out. Look at the binder. <laughs> it's IBM. And it's yeah, a System 370. Concepts. It's at least from the 1970s. Probably from the... Possibly... Oh, I think 1960s was mostly owned by like... Uh, not like owned, but like yeah. own, uh, owned by like the, the System 360. The System 370. That looks like um, a child's toy. Similar to like the... Computron. Speaking spell. Yeah. Might have a voice chip inside of it. I don't know. Oh good, and they didn't leave the batteries in. Well, it looks like they did leave they it. Did they did just took it out. It looks very nasty. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm at the the Greenville. The Greenville Alco and they have more of these. For a dollar a piece. I thought they didn't have these here because they didn't have them up there. Wow. This is cool. Okay guys. So I kinda think I have too many of these now. Definitely gonna sell some. I'll most likely keep a lot of the Nintendo ones, but who knows? It's just such a good deal, you know? Ah, well. It's $30 for all this. Oh, I'm sorry. I got sidetracked working on my tablet. In my new tablet holder that I built. But that isn't for another video. Pretty awesome though, I'm pretty happy with it. Very useful, very classy. Anyway, let's get on to this. Please choose an activity. How do you say it? Apple. Elephant. Handbag. It's basically a modified speaking spell, or actually a the next generation of toys after the speaking spell that has a lot more words, a lot more memory, and a better speech synthesizer too. Teacher. 
The keys are interesting. It has a lot more game Watch. modes on it. Yeah. Rainbow. Zipper. Beetle. I don't exactly have much use for it, Island. but I'm. It'd be interesting to take the the Devil. speech synthesizer out and use that on something else. Universe. Because it seems like it, it can say some pretty dynamic words. Funnel. Yes. Nineteen. I'll probably be doing a teardown video of this to see what's inside of it pretty soon. Anyway. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!